I went to sleep six o'clock. The geek scusi, the boy ganek. I woke up nish nish the boy ganek. Me ban ge ge gago ne ge gago nish waswe ne simedana the boy ganek. It says it's uh three thirty. Nish waswe. See you see nish in there. Nish wash. Nijwa sweet a she Nisimidana de Baiganek. That's three thirty. De Baiganek. That's why I said learn your numbers. And there's a lot of stuff that I put on there. I put uh Nigi Nigi Gizuze Kwe Jeba uh no. What do we say, sir? Evening. Evening. Um, Let's see. I gotta think again here for how do you say evening? Uh, una. Wagune? Una. Unakshuk. Unakshuk. Yeah. Hey, George Lugat. Let's go for Nice. Let's save. Ni Gizu se kwe oga. Unakshuk, I cooked walleye for supper. Me had to go in the gee and I'm only one eating. Yeah, that's what I said up there. And then there's a lot of stuff. There's uh, other stuff that I, I posted and I wrote. And, uh, see, like here. I was just thinking about old words I heard my grandma and grandpa and my mom. When one of us, when when our shoes were on the wrong foot, they used to say, not pakizene. See, you could see shoes in there, makizen. Makizen, but they would add, not pakizene. You can hear shoe, makizen. Not pa, wrong, wrong shoe, wrong shoe on the foot or nothing. Another word is my foot is sleeping. You know, like when you have a picky foot. Geekamunzade. See, like you can see. Geekamunz. Uh, Geekamunz. That means when you're, like you're numb or something. Geekamunzade. And then uh, that you can see foot on there, or like uh, barefoot. You say Shashaganizade. See, you could say Ginizade, you see that in that word. Ginizade. And there's just a lot of different words that. Nashke. Nashke. Nashke away. Nashke is away, Bokoma. Like, Nashke. Is look. Nashke as your way buck. Look what's going on here. Nashke as your way buck on ma. Sabikune zagi egan. You know, look what's going on here. And you can add like the zagi egan away. You know, it's flooding. You know, there's going, or going away. Uh, give me one, no rain. You know, and you could just add on and on. Nashke, nashke is your way, buck oma. And uh, there's just so many words like, like when you say, like you're gonna make bread, you say ni kweshigan ke, ni is I. Kweshigan ke, I'm gonna make bread in ni. Manomenike, it's all K at the end. Manomenike, we're going to make rice, you know. And you can use K, K A on the end of, of uh, what word you're doing that with somebody. Like, we're going to make bread. In case you can K M in, you could say, Manomenike, in. 
Okay, let's see my moment. Your hair. I put on there. Then another put I put. I, I used a, a word that was uh, with the feeling word. Me. How do you say happy? Jikendam uh -huh. dongum. I'm happy today. Nigi dana. Nigi dana. dan kubi dagan. I'm happy today. I have six. Uh, six uh, great grandkids, Don Kupidog, and our grandkids, great grandkids. Nij, see, there's a number again. Nij Gwimazasug, two boys. Basic Nij Nishwi Niwin Kwesasug, four girls. And, uh, Away, away, benut yak them kids. Kita, kita, gikino umaguog. I'm teaching them. Anishinaabemo, uh, and I'm teaching them how to talk the language. And uh, and then another word is dinsago, means it's up to you. Like say if you're somebody asks you do you want to go for a ride or you say ginsa go it's up to you or or you could say go in no get ginsa go it's up to you you want to go out ginsa go what about no no go in go in go in no go no no, that's not yet. Hmm. Uh, that's that's after. Well, not now, after. Oh, okay. Not now, after. Yeah, yeah. And then what's later, Pear? Nagach. Uh, Nagach. Yeah, Bama Nagach. Bama Nagach. Bama Nagach. Nagi Bambizamin. Wait till later. We'll go on a ride. We'll go riding. Mm -hmm. Bombism in. And then there's a. Gishpin. If it's Gishpin. Wewe ni bimandis in. Gabe i gikam bimandis. If you live a good life, you will live a long time. Gishpin. Is if. Wewe ni bimandis in. If you live a good life. Kabe e is a long time. Kidabi Madis, you will live a long time. Kishpin Wewe, Wewe ne bimadisin. Kabe e kikabi Madis. If you could just get them sentences together, you know. Somebody wrote a sentence. Okay, I. Somebody said, "Ningo kud nungum. Ningo kud nungum. It's cloudy today. That's a weather word. And today is nungum. Ningo kud nungum. Nudin, windy. Bungi sena. Do you remember bungi is a little bit cold. The bungi sena." And then, Ayamino Gishikat, have a nice day. Ayamino Gishikat. And on these games here, there is sentences like, you should know how to say net lake, and you should know how to say tower, you know, where you're from. Today's a nice day. We're going to ask Gizich again. What are you going to do? We're going to ask. Nice day today. We're going to ask 
Kiki is a chicken. No, good morning, gonna do today. Have a nice day. Ayan mino gishikat. And there's just, uh, I think you could learn better by, uh, by hearing a person say the words and write them down. Like, this is time again, the clock. Nigik shkuzi. I woke up. See, remember when you I say ne is I. Nigik shkuzi. Nanan. Nan nanan de bike neck. I woke up at uh, nanan. That's five o'clock. Nigizi bi kishe. I took a shower. Mi aja ningodaso de baiganek. Ingodaso. See, they have ingodaso here instead of, you know, and de baiganek. And a budge. It's maybe. Nigijitun makade mishkiki wabu. I made coffee. Nigi nuki. In 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 go the neck. I'm I'm gonna go to work. No go. Ayan meno gijigat no kumis. That's what I said. But there's just so much. In order to in order to learn like how I learn, you have to hear people talking around you every day. Or you have to hear something about the language, you know, kabegishik. Uh, that mm -hmm. means every day kabegishik. Like being joyben egegishikat. That means election day. See, being joyben you can see that you're throwing something in. Being joyben or being joyben. That you know. It ain't, and then when you want to say, it ain't a nice day, you put Gawin in front of it. Gawin mino gijiga sinun. Oma, it ain't a nice day here. Gawin mino gijiga sina, oma. And, you know, there's, and there's a buju nij mino gijib. Buju niji. Hello, my friend. Mino Gijeb. Good morning. Ani Neji Ayaya Nungum. How are you today? Ani Neji Ayaya Nungum. Um big is it? Bit noisy. Um big is it? Gigago Midaswe de Boy Kanek. It's almost ten o'clock. Nigijitun Nibish, I'm gonna make some tea. But you gotta just uh bizin dun away go kit kit to walk away uh chi aya ag. You gotta listen to the elders what they talk. You gotta listen to them. In, uh, I try to, I call the, I'm getting used to talking the language. I, I even now, uh, this morning I called, I called the, uh, uh, looking for somebody at the RTC and the lady answered and just, I said, Mino Gijab. Hear that lady kind of, she didn't know what I was saying. I said, I said, good morning. And she said, how do you say that again? And I told her, and she said it, and she said it just good, like, you know, like she, sometimes these, some people are, are better than how the way, the way other Indians say words, you know? But this lady, she said, Minogishab, really good. No, and that was her probably her first try. Just resi, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just resi already. Yep, yeah, already. <laughs> That's what uh, 
that's what the, when I first started, they said, who's in that other room talking so rizzy? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking, they must just hear how Indians, their, their voices are different. They, you could just tell when a Nishinaabe, a Gigido, mm -hmm. Indian talking, Gigido is talking, or no, Kido is talking, is Gigido. Gidakido Gego, say something. Gidakido Gego. Gego is something. Gidakido. Gidakido Gego, Gin Nashki Beness. Talk a little bit? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I've had something that's been burning on my mind for a long past couple days. Gin Nibi, no? Yeah, yeah. Nibi. Uh, Nikki Naska on the bit. Okay. I asked him, <clears throat> is this my water? Uh, Minikwene. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no day, Minikwene. I'm thirsty. So, it's, it was that time of the year for the for parades and celebrations for July 4th. And so, uh, is it, is where, the topic of question that I want to bring up, and I want to ask you too, Brown, is wearing. A Native American headdress offensive question. No, if the Indians wearing it, then they, they, you know, they should, uh, they could wear it. But if it's, if it's, you know, just, I don't but, see. But what if, what, I mean, okay, so I was, you know, growing up, you, you know, you're taught traditional things like, you know, only people of great immense respect are supposed to wear those like fluent speakers medicine um, a white doctor a doc yeah um, but you know in coming years it's it's growing it's well it's been a problem in our in our country and they say it's due to a, a sincere lack of education that these that these efforts appear offensive and insensitive and that they perpetuate a stereotype and strips the headdress of its spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Whoa, do you, do you hear that? Yeah, when he was talking, the papers just blew up. Maybe you're not, there shouldn't be, I don't know what that meant, but we don't have no wind in here and nothing. And when he got done talking, the papers- That George, paper flew up. George stepped out of the office, but. When he went out, he was already gone, and then papers just flew up and went down on the desk again. So a month, a month ago. But when I, like, long time ago, they, I remember they used to have floats. And they had, like, they had uh, a group of people from Net Lake in the parade, and they planned it. They planned it. I remember the chief was there standing with a with a headdress on, and you know he had his pipe. And there was a lady with a jingle dress. She was there, and uh, she had like a, a fan made out of eagle feathers. And there was some kids dressed with uh, regalia. A boy, a little, a uh, little boy about six, five, six, a little boy and a girl, and they had some, uh, like teenagers, young, young people, dressed in their regalia. Uh, say, the girl was fifteen. Medaswaya shinana dibuna gisa kwezas. The girl was fifteen. The boy was dressed, he was about the same age, and you know, and that looked really nice. And they had a drum on there, you know, and and that's okay, I, you know, I even liked that. I was young when I went to that parade. I think they did have it in Ely, I don't know if it was in Ely or, or, oh, I can't remember, it's been so long. But, uh, you know, I don't respect that when, you know, if, 
if it I respect it if it's planned, planned out, you know. But uh, uh, nice, because I did, I did. I just wanted to know your viewpoint on it. Yeah, that's, that's all. That's my viewpoint there. And as long as it's like a, a native person doing it, or yeah, and they okay, all native, yeah. okay, like I just yeah, I just wanted to, George, you missed it when you when you left. Uh, yeah, I brought up. I was just yeah. talking about like Graham. Do you want to tell him? Yeah, he, he brought up that uh, like having floats and stuff. Yeah, we were already out of the room there. And, and if it's offensive, it yeah, headdress. Your papers, both and papers, just flew up in the air and then they went back. Like home. somebody. Oh really? Oh. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Like, yeah. well, maybe you shouldn't be talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what was it again about headdresses? Oh, I was, I was like uh, the topic of it, it was. Uh, um, is it offensive to wear? Because there's a, it's a topic in in, in country now. Because um, there was that teacher that got fired back in 2021. Mm -hmm. She was doing that dance and she had that oh paper headdress on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Riverside, California teacher got yeah. She got they protested it, but I was just wondering if it was like up here. Do you deem it offensive mm. or insensitive to our culture? Yeah, I really think it. It, it depends on the, the people themselves, yeah. the, the culture, the land that they're on, all that kind of stuff. So, okay. um, but you know, from afar, I've seen that too. But that goes back long ways. Yeah. I think when uh, natives start having conferences, you know, national conferences, mm -hmm. and they would bring everybody would bring their teachings and all their ways and stuff like that, and how they would execute, not execute, but how they would conduct a uh, ceremony mm -hmm. and how they would observe. You know, I, I saw. Uh, a uh, woman get irate one time with uh, how uh, another person set their their feathers down on the ground. Yeah, oh, and yeah. Uh, I've also seen, um, you know, and the, the woman just stormed out of the room. You know, she's like, I can't believe this is, <laughs> you know, this is, yeah. And it was, but you got to be respectful of the land that you're on, you know, and where you're at. I mean, here, yeah, we observe certain things and. That's one of the, the things that, that I've always been observant of, especially if I go to some other area. I guess you could even say, uh, you know, like contest uh, powwows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You wonder whether that's real or if it's, you know, I mean, I think we had one guy up here, uh, Bowie Lad. He talked a little bit about that, I believe, and he said something about, I remember, like, like he would go and do exhibitions all over the United States. Mm -hmm. He was a pretty well-known um, dancer, lecturer, you know, and he would go out just as a young young boy. And all through his life, he's been like a ambassador. And so he, he shared a lot of knowledge on that. And I don't know if uh, we still have that in our archives, but if you want to look it up, uh, look him up. And he's kind of, I, I would say, the go-to guy, you know what I mean, about customs and about um, observances and different native peoples and how they you know like today it's uh, especially on the, like the contest circuit uh, contest powwows and stuff like that for our other listeners that are out there there's these powwows and there's uh, I don't know different p types of powwows uh, gatherings I should say not necessarily powwows but a lot of people uh, different native people gather for a certain ceremony and uh, not all of them are considered powwows, you know, even though we have people uh, singing and dancing and things like that. Um, there there could be other purposes, you know, like down south they do chord dances, and I don't profess to be a, a, a anybody that, that knows anything about it, you know. And uh, they have their style of singing to the south, and we have our style here to the north, and even further north they have their own uh, ways of, of conducting not only just their powwows but conducting their their ceremonies and stuff so uh, I really think it's just you know the people that are that are there and whoever's presenting I don't know about that teacher necessarily but of course if she wasn't didn't have a connection to the native uh, I don't oh. know uh, community I would say community if she was given permission because some some people say well yeah we were given permission by this you know what I mean chief back in 1920 or 1880 or somewhere around there saying that we were allowed to do this you know and so you know you, you get some of those questions and it, there's even a lot of those kind of controver not, uh, controversial 
um, I wouldn't call them issues, but just controversial um, things, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that are out there. I mean, there, there's uh, one I can think of uh, in this area, uh, and it had to do with, uh, you know, something that's not common, you know, for a woman to, uh, to, I don't know, possess, I guess, I don't know, as part of her her uh, regalia, you know, and I yeah, would even say yeah. that has to do with um, teachings, not only just in our community, but, you know, the other communities, uh, Ojibwe communities, even up in Canada, and, and so it's important for the, for the people to uh, uh, explain, I guess, explain themselves, <laughs> but um, just to, uh, you know what I mean, yeah. put it out there that, uh, how it came to be that this is the situation, you know? And so a lot of that goes on at Powell's. You'll get people that will get up there and some will be brief about it and just kind of get to the point and say, this is why this situation exists, you know, or this is the reason why this is happening. Uh, otherwise, you know, and then there's other people that I, <laughs> I kind of joke about, they'll get up and there's this one dude I knew from, uh, I think he's up from South Dakota, and he can go on and on and on. I mean, you ask him one little question or something, and he'll, he'll just keep yeah, going with it. Yeah, you like, but he's got it down. <laughs> you almost want to tell him, get doing biggest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or that's enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. How would you say it with that? That's enough. Me ill. Me ill. Okay. There. That's enough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that long time ago, I remember my grandma, and uh, that was in a, maybe even a 20s, 30s, 40s, even the 50, early 50s, I think. Um, they, they had to have permission by the chief for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that old chief was Bill Johnson, I think, and uh, John Netlake. And um, they even had to have permission for a non-Indian to come and and if he wanted to come and learn something from the Anishinaabe, he'd have to get uh, get permission from the chief to come, say, I'm going to stay for two weeks, and then I'll be gone. Mm -hmm. And they would let him, like if he wanted to do a thing on wild rice or something. And even, uh, like the way it was a long time ago, say, uh, my sister-in-law, she married a Richard Helverson, he, he'd come as a director here. He worked as a director. And uh, she started going with him, and she, they, were, they got married. And uh, her mother told her, now you're married to him. He's, you have to go with him where his home is. Mm -hmm. So they moved, and she never was come. She never came back here. They lived in Princeton. But that's what the the old chiefs used to do. Mm -hmm. If uh, say if a, a Red Laker married a boys sport, that Red Laker was in was uh, could come in here and she could even be enrolled here. Mm -hmm. yep. And then, but the, if the man if the man married, uh, he'd bring his wife. But if say the lady married another man from another reservation she would go with him to mm -hmm. his reservation yeah and then you know it was like that till lately you know in the 50s and mm -hmm. everybody started they have to get permission to be on the reservation so right now it's just like a, a free you know yeah they don't follow nothing well uh, i expect that because you know things change you i know? wonder if those uh those rules are still or laws are still in our whatever it is are still in the books you know what I mean yeah Somewhere. I, I bet they yeah they are and, huh. and yeah. that's what they used to well even before that right they had the reason why I suppose the chief took over that responsibility because they had the Indian agents yeah. that used to be here like a long time ago mm -hmm. yeah before that time where you had anybody if you like if you were from Red Lake or you were from mm -hmm. Fond du Lac and you were coming here, you had to let the Indian agent know that you were coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah even if it was your family yeah. or somebody that was related to you or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they basically kept a log 
and those are historical information that's out there. I remember um, J.K. Davis used to write a lot about that, uh, about the Indian agents and a lot of their records of the comings and goings of, you know, uh, corporations or business owners or whatever it was uh, that were coming here. And then also they made notes about, oh, uh, uh, somebody's cousin is coming from Minneapolis and they're staying for four or five days and then they're expected to, you know, return. And I always thought that was really, I don't know, creepy. <laughs> well, then, yeah. too, couldn't they deny the request, too, mm -hmm. those Indian agents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing that's kind of negative about that part. Is well, if they were really coming to do, I, like, ceremonies, right? Mm -hmm. So they used to outlaw a lot of the ceremonies. Oh, yeah. And so that was part of the agreement when... Uh, I, I think they agreed to some of these uh, treaties that they uh, signed was that you, you would forego your ceremonies and forego your traditional uh, lifestyle and forego your use of your language and you know and so they were trying I think they were trying to enforce it or at least keep people trying to live up to their treaty word you know um, but of course a lot of people didn't agree agree to that you know, I think uh, Fond du Lac famously um, talks about that too. That they were they were one of the only tribes that never that didn't agree um, to the Minnesota what is it uh, Chippewa tribe. I can't remember the exact word, but um, they they agreed not to. Uh, their, their voters, you know, they didn't count everybody. They only counted the people that went out to vote. So. Traditionally, if you didn't support something, you didn't show up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So you just didn't didn't go, mm -hmm. and uh, it, but it was that's what they they counted down there, and what they always point to is that none of our people uh, agreed to that. Only the people that showed up to vote, you know. Uh, and the way the way it was, it, like you said, they they didn't show up. You they, but long time ago they used to pass around tobacco because you know there was. All uh, the Anishinaabe here, that was when the chief was real strict about, you know, in, if they give you tobacco to attend, and if you, if you couldn't attend, you wouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of like a promise to you were going to be there. Yep. Another thing was what they used to do, I think they still do that here. They used to, if somebody show not chigay, that show not chigay means raising hell or me god the oak of fighting mm -hmm. they used to kick them off the reservation for, oh, yeah. they'd only do it like for a month mm -hmm. then they did it again they two months you know yeah. and then keep coming back and mm -hmm. and i remember they used to do that to this one he was really a he was really a, a <laughs> what would you have to do to get banished for a month or two? Oh, I'm sure they did pretty I think they easy do fighting. Oh, fighting. Yeah, fighting or being yeah, like, just, just be a nuisance oh, to the okay. reservation. Okay. And I'm pretty sure they still do that. Yeah, they, I, I've heard, actually I heard somebody uh, comment on Facebook, oh yeah, they chased, they, me, off they the chased me off the res, yeah, or something like that, I'm still um, banned or whatever it is, but yeah, mm -hmm. you would have to be, uh, I don't know, deemed, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, deemed something. out of line or, yeah, or out of order. Or, or community, yeah. That's oh, wow. one thing they're still sticking by. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. one thing, but they're not sticking by a, a lot of other things, you know. And so that was back in the day before the yeah, Minnesota Chippewa, it. well, yeah. let me see, the Tribal Council, right? Yeah, it was, they didn't even have a Tribal Council, and it was just the old men taking care of the res. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. I remember Grandpa George, mm -hmm. Bill Smith, I mean, uh, Pete Smith, Bill Johnson, Bill Boney, John Netlake, Charlie Day. There was like a Wooden Frog, Bill Wooden Frog, and uh, Burnside, and you know there was like eight eight old men that would 
come and meet at my grandpa's house and sit around and every two weeks they'd meet and see okay how to take care of the reservation how to take care of the lake how to take care of the rice you know they'd meet and they never you know, never got paid or you know they they would just you know and um, they you know it was just them and the ladies too they everybody would pitch in and clean the lake shores you know the ladies would rake the shores the kids would even there helping mm -hmm. we do go they'd help we do go off in those meetings that they would have those those men would, would it be in a language or would it be some it English? It would all be in a language. Oh, I, wow. I, my, my grandpa and them, they had a upstairs in his house and they had like a hole that you could peek through into the kitchen down there. I, I'd sit up there and I'd listen, I'd put my ear in there and I'd listen to them having a meeting. <laughs> I'd understand what... <laughs> What they were all talking about. Mm -hmm. They were talking one time about bringing the horses down to Lost River to clear log jams, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I, I could see my grandpa looking up in that the hole. He must know I was listening. Would say quesh quesh shishweg gi na be gi gi na be ma. He'd say that old girl is looking here. He'd say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, but you know, times change, and I hope you know we can get at least. That's why I'm trying so hard with the language. Just maybe a few will get it back. But what I know now is we have to get it back with the kids, mm -hmm. the little kids, if we want it, because older people can't remember. And they they say, oh, I can't remember this word. It was just told to me told to me uh, one well it's uh, hey it's the uh, don't mean to break in but it's the top of the hour right now it's 11 o'clock a uh, minute after I think what we'll do is uh, uh, on way bida on way bida mm -hmm. we'll take a break mm -hmm. so let's rest a bit here and uh, we'll let you listen to this little playlist I put together for you and uh, it's a mixture of stuff, but mostly uh, some of the side steps. So, you ladies, here you go. Whoops, I messed that up. There we go. You need some coffee, right? You want some coffee? You want some coffee, or, yes. or else do you want another Maybe. water? Maybe. Oh, some tea? Maybe. Okay. We could put some in a cup or something. Like I bought.
podcasting at you from Net Lake, Minnesota, right here on the Net Lake School campus. And we are going through our Anishinaabe Moin program with Auntie Karen. She is in studio here with me, along with Terry Drift, her grandson, and he is our KBFT Legacy Project Manager. And uh, he's got a big event that's coming up at uh, the Duluth uh, uh, Lake Walk, right there, Gitchi O'Day a King Park, right down there next to, um, kind of right off the street or the avenue where uh, Bongaloot is there. There's an entryway there. Um, we're hosting C. Hassan, who is from Arizona, of uh, uh, National Notoriety. I just saw a post from them. They're down in Peru. Uh, looks like they're having a good time and they're gonna be in uh, Duluth next week. Uh, headlining an event. Uh, opening up for them is gonna be our own, uh, Netflix, very own War Bonnet, Chaz Wagner. Uh, Chaz's band will be opening up and doing an hour-long set along with uh, C. Hassan's set. They'll probably uh, do some uh, musical exchanges also. So come join us. It's a free event. Um, we're inviting all of our uh, Voice Forked uh, band members that live in the Duluth area to come and support KBFT and uh, uh, show your basically just show your support because we want to do more than this <coughs> down there for you and uh, depending on how this one goes yeah we'll, we'll line up some more as much as you guys want and uh, let's uh, let's see you there right there yep oh, for sure okay what we're gonna do now uh, with the Anishinaabe Moin is we're gonna cover the material that uh, Perry uh, prepared for us today for our <coughs> language segment here him and uh, Auntie Karen are going to go through their um, their uh, material, and I am going to um, be quiet. Dogi wunuk, ani shenset the bike neck. Midas, let's see. Midas le a shibbe shik. The bike neck. Midas we a shit basic. Now, how would I say this? Uh, 11 and 10. Midas we a shit basic. Jibwa. Is that the. Ishqua? Ishqua. Bastard. Ishqua. Midas we. 11 after 10. Yeah. Now it's. Uh, Midaswe a shibeshik, Midaswe a shinish, eleven twelve. So I'll just go through the word list for one o'clock all the way to twelve. Yeah. And yeah. Basic de one o'clock. Nijo de two o'clock. Niswe de three o'clock. Ni win to buy Ganak, four o'clock. Na no to buy Ganak, five o'clock. Ningo da sway to buy Ganak, six o'clock. Ni joa sway to buy Ganak, seven o'clock. Nishwa sway to buy Ganak, eight o'clock. Janga sway to buy Ganak, nine o'clock. Mida sway to buy Ganak, ten o'clock. Mida sway ashi basic to buy Ganak, eleven o'clock. Midaswe Ashi Nij, twelve uh Dubai Ganek, twelve o'clock. And if you see on the left of the page you see the uh the word for a watch is the the bog is a swan ens. Dubai the bay is the swan ens. The bay is the bay is a swan uh Oh, I just murdered that <laughs> word. The bay is the bay is swan ens. The bay is swan ens. Let me try it. The bog is Sawanes. No. No. The bay gees is swanes. Oh, the bay gees is swanes. Not the bay gees. Now you got me. The bay gees is swanes. The bay gees is swan. Gees is swan. The bay gees is swan. Yes. 
The by Jesus one s. The by Jesus one s. The by Jesus one s. You don't say Jesus. You oh, say the by Jesus. The by Jesus one. Jesus one. The by Jesus one. No, the by Jesus one. The by Jesus. No, you don't say. The by Jesus one. Jesus. Jesus one. Jesus one. Yeah, Jesus one. one. Don't say Jesus. Jesus one. Jesus one. Jesus okay. one. The by Jesus one. The by Jesus one. Nas. 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 The by Jesus. Nas. The by Jesus one. Nas. The by Jesus one. Nas. Yeah. Okay. The by Jesus one. Nas. That Nas at the end is a little tiny watch. Mm -hmm. Small. Nas. Yeah. Okay. Clock. A small. In other words, a, a small clock. Mm, the way okay. Jesus wants Okay. You're going to have to practice. Definitely. Your watch, your little. Yep. I got to get that sound effect in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a yep. Yep. Yes, a yep. A yep. That's the Reggie version. Yeah. No. Yeah, where you have to raise your shoulders. A yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, that's that's uh, what we got for you today for our uh, language material. If you want to look at it and enjoy it and maybe download it, you can go to our Facebook page and you'll see it right on our Facebook. So check that out. What should we talk about? I gotta bring it up. I could, that paper moving is still on my mind, and then it's happened before when we were we were doing that Bappe Dewin series a month ago, two months ago. I was here by myself, and Marty's chair. Somebody sat in it, but he was. I was the only one in here. It was like seven o'clock, seven thirty, and then there was another instant <laughs> instant where somebody threw something in the garbage. But it was, you know, when you. Throw it, when you throw something in the garbage, you hear it hit the side of that can. You know, make that little. Yeah. That happened too, mm. and then now that paper moved right in front of us. Yeah, they were surrounded by spirits. Yeah. They, especially, I think, yeah, at night too, they be cut. Because in the. Kogi be shaw kowe mane duk. <laughs> I was just scared I was going to call George and tell him I need to go home. <laughs> but I was like, no, I, I remember what Grandpa told me. He said, nah. He kind of got mad. Remember when he left? I was scared. He goes, he can't away, he said. Yeah, that's... He, he can't hurt you. If they wanted to hurt you, they would have done it already. So don't be scared. You're not supposed to be scared of spirits. But, um, yeah, it just that was on my mind. Three times, it's, three instances, uh, three times it's happened here since I've been working here. Yeah, you hear all over. You, you, uh, I, I hear them too at home. Yeah, we had, uh, I had um, Danny Parado stop over yesterday morning. They might be at my house right now, um, but they, uh, they, Checked on my uh, my uh, my little garden, my gitigan, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't doing good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if I have my uh, my great grandfather's uh, uh, farming genes or <laughs> 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 my green thumb is uh, yeah is a little uh, a little uh, stunted, I think, mm -hmm. but giving it a try they're gonna come back today and they're gonna kind of re um, till my mm -hmm. soil and then we're gonna add some some black dirt to it mm -hmm. yeah nice how much do, nice. do you remember about all of that about well, grandpa farming and you know back where Strongville is there's still a machine back there the machine they used to pull up the they used to drive it, mm -hmm. or they had it. I think they had horses hooked up to it. Yeah. 
and they right by where the RTC is now there was a great big uh, pinin garden potato mm -hmm. and I, they used to till that up with that machine mm -hmm. they, they, you'd see all the dirt and stuff but they used to, and that's where they planted their potatoes mm -hmm. and that's funny nobody will come and get that machine it still looks in good shape <laughs> it's still back there yeah I remember, I, I think I, we used to sit on it when we were kids, and then, um, yeah, I, I remember that machine being down there. It's just a, a ground, uh, I don't know what they call it, plow, not a plow, but uh, it... Like tills rips, the rips, land, right? Yeah, it or? just rips up the, the land. And, oh, man. You know. And, uh, like, our grandpa had a lot of help, like, your grandpa Louie and uh, uh, Uncle Bill and all these uh, Herbert they'd all be helping him plant the gardens well you had a lot of a lot of lot, help then a lot huh? of help yeah yeah because I I only I what I try to do is I try to start seeds I mean mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'm doing them right but I kind of went off of what I would assume <laughs> <laughs> you know plants need which is soil you know or good soil and sunlight and water and you know, maybe a little bit of warmth, but uh, I'm hoping these new seeds I have, by the time the kids are done, because she brought over, um, um, let me see, I think it was uh, little uh, Terrence Boje, uh, Latisse Strong, and uh, I'm trying to remember the other girl's name. I think it was uh, Murray, one of Muriel's granddaughters. Um, and they came over, and uh, they were, uh, helping her so mm -hmm. I know she's got some little helpers with her and I know uh, that uh, Terrence he'd been running around helping her operate the, the tiller and that being the muscle mm -hmm. so and they said they had some other uh, other gardens to to um, to check on but yeah I just kind of gave him my little viewpoint on you know why I'm trying to garden I said <laughs> my, I was telling him about Strongville and mm -hmm. you know how uh, our family used to uh, uh, sustain their food you know food sustainability and yeah. that's kind of what uh, Danny's program is all about is about teaching our community members you know to uh, provide or at least be able to uh, grow their own food so they don't have to mm -hmm. make those multiple trips to the to the uh, town I often wonder how if it didn't rain, I never seen them water the gardens like they had corn on a cob. Mm -hmm. They had a right where the bow diamond is. There was a great big long cornfield, and then pinny and corn and potatoes. And they probably had more gardens, but it was too young. To, but I know we'd pick potatoes, we'd make games out of it, and we'd have to help make hay for the horses. They'd cut hay and we'd all go gather up hay. And because they, my grandpa had three horses, and mm -hmm. but, you know, we were just kids. And, but I don't know, I never watched them plant, I just watched them till the, the ground up, you know, for the, the seeds or whatever they. Mm -hmm. And then my, my uh, grandma, and then they pull weeds, grandma and her sister. and It seems like they would be busy all day long. Yeah, they were. Clara's mom would be panning hides. And we'd be helping her. Mm. And they'd be panning. They'd, oh, yeah. They'd even can ducks. Oh, yeah. Blueberries. Uh-huh. You know, they, they were busy, busy, busy. Well, we must be getting close to what strawberries? I heard the uh, yeah. Farrah went and picked some. Oh she yeah. She picked like almost a almost a cupful. Mm. But I, she said the blueberries weren't gawin mashi not yet. Mm. Gawin see no mashi is yet. No, not yet. How much rice would um, George's grandpa, and then um, your 
uncle and grandfathers get when they were doing farming? What, how much rice would they usually get a year? That the lake was so full that sometimes they go out two, three times out on the lake and come back with canoe fulls. Wow. I see, could you imagine that? Like, that the whole outside was their farmer's market, their grocery store. Yeah. That is, they that's used awesome. To, uh, they used to dig holes in the ground and that's where they keep their uh, monument. Mm -hmm. In the ground, underground. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Was there a limit back then? Like, how the... <clears throat> how much uh, deer or deer meat they could get or no, there was never a limit even on the rice you didn't have to pay to go get a license or they didn't you know even kid, me and uh, me and uh, George's dad went out there we were only 11 and 12 he said I'll give you more rice if you paddle <laughs> <laughs> so there I was struggling paddling him around out there he was knocking <laughs> couldn't eat rice either until we had a first ceremony then we'd, we'd get to eat our rice everybody would put in some for for uh for gapisige that's pork and gapisige and then you know they would jig they would bawishkam that jig the rice they would bawishkam bawishkam yeah, then they would new scotchige band New Scotch again. New Scotch and with with a uh, uh, basket. Basket. Yeah. New Scotch again. New Scotch and Nagan. New Scotch and Nagan. So okay. you could see a Nagan in there like a dish. And that's what they would be making right now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They would uh, be peeling the bark already yeah. and making, uh, making the baskets yeah. or anything else. They'd be making paddles and knocking sticks. Probably they would have started in early June. Mm -hmm making paddles and patching up boats and and that's what we used to keep a big can of pa uh, patching in a garage and it was made out of a, a pine uh, pine trees you know that big that sticky stuff you get out of a tree where you you can take a like a a safety pin and pick it and it will come draining down mm -hmm. my grandpa used to make patching out of that mm. he just almost like uh, almost like uh, sugar making sugar hanging uh, hanging uh, something on there to catch all that that uh, sticky stuff from uh, to uh, they, they had an Indian name for it I can't even remember it offhand but it turned black after and he had it in a big can about that big and me and Clara went in there and we took it and it, it was like silly putty or it would stretch. Like glue like, or Yeah, like it would look. So we went in there and they told us not to bother that. Like they told us and we did. We didn't listen. Gawi nagi biz and dawa see away. Nanukumis, nanishumis. We didn't listen. Anyway, we each took some and we was chewing it like gum. And we were all black on our mouth and you know but what that what happened to us is we lost our taste for about three days we couldn't even taste nothing we tried to eat crackers nothing mm. I said that would be a good diet for someone who wanted to lose weight <laughs> 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 just chew on that uh, pitch uh -uh. And, you know that they would go patch boats up with that and you know use it even they'd use it for the house the roof if mm -hmm. the roof was leaking they would uh, use that pitch to uh, patch up the house so, you know. yeah that's what uh, when we had Wayne uh, Valeri up here mm -hmm. when we built that uh, that canoe yeah yeah he made a lot of that yeah and Darren must know how because Darren helped a lot you know yeah yeah, he said Darren knows how to gather that pitch. Mm -hmm. that, That's uh, what I told him. I said, we should try to do our own, make our own canoe. Yeah, and make, uh, have him go show everybody how to do the pitch, you know. And mm -hmm. I watched them do the pitch, and, you know, 
I just want to leave it be here doing it outside or not. Well, we don't have the uh, the quality or the old old trees like they used to have back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I'm sure all of this whatever is out there now is probably <clears throat> maybe fourth or fifth generation, mm -hmm. you know, logging. Um, yeah, took all the took all the big the old trees. Wash. Yep, the old uh, birch bark. Birch So you would probably have to go way out of nowhere to go look for maybe a yeah. birch bark. Wigwash. Mm -hmm. Yep, you probably have to go back up into, uh, maybe up into the, I don't know, BWC <laughs> somewhere up north of the uh, Equi Trail, maybe up along there where you might be able to find something, um, you know, some large areas. I know uh, Wayne said that too. He said, hey, have you tried to look around here for source, to source some of the, the birch bark? And he said there wasn't. Uh, anything close to like uh, some of the areas that they were able to harvest which I think was in uh, either a state forest or a um, national forest but he got he had uh, permission to go in there and gather and uh, mm -hmm. harvest uh, wigwas so yeah. but um, maybe those are the kind of things that we you know we need to do yep Darren yeah. I know he's pretty busy but um, I, I think he, he probably could, like you said, he was pretty closely involved and uh, helped out a lot. So, yeah. so one of these days, yeah. So I added that to uh, this calendar here. I have this, I don't know where I found this, mm -hmm. but it uh, kind of goes through our Anishinaabe um, calendar, time of year. Mm -hmm. So we would kind of do things like right now, um, what is it? Well, we're past the maple syrup making, right? And we're into fishing. Um, there's a fish meal thing here. I don't know what exactly that means, but they probably made some kind of ground up fish, maybe? I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. I remember my grandma used to boil a lot. Oh, okay. They never hurt, they never fried. Mm -hmm. They just boil fish, mm -hmm. make fish soup, and you know. Oh, okay. Like what, like wigwas, a birch bark, they only have like in June is a month to go and get it, you know, that's when it comes off the trees really good. Yep. And there's just certain times of the month for things, you know, all kinds of things like berries and, you know, all that. And uh, they used to tell me that there's a lot of choke cherries, if there's a lot of pine cones and hazelnuts, you're going to have a good rice crop. Mm. But <coughs> I don't see any any growing by my house. I have a big hazelnut tree. And you I, had a lot of uh, choke cherries back yeah, there too, I remember. Yeah, and I, I don't see any growing at all mm -hmm. back there. Unless they'll grow late because uh, of the weather, late things here you know yeah and I think everything is starting out late this year because mm -hmm. a lot of people were commenting about their getting their uh, plants you know they start mm -hmm. their uh, garden indoors mm -hmm. and then they trans transplant them to their uh, outdoor garden but then they said yeah. there were a couple of nights where it got pretty close to freezing temperature yeah. <laughs> it's all always cold here well right now yeah it seems like in it's the morning. repeating what uh, back in the 90s I remember there was a volcano down by um, I don't know India south of India like uh, uh, in those uh, Philippines or South Pacific or whatever they call that area there was a big volcano that erupted back in them days and uh, I think it was like 89 or maybe 90 somewhere or 91 but it messed up with the weather or messed with the weather for I don't know how long almost 10 years I remember you know my nephews and that they're they're growing up probably you too growing up and it was just wet and cold and <laughs> all summer long and I was like wow that's got to be pretty uh, pretty tough on a generation yeah. I was thinking <laughs> yeah. you know because I because I can remember uh, Every morning it would be like bright and blue. I remember one summer it was like 
it would it would rain at night this thunderstorm like right about midnight and then wake up in the morning and it'll be just bright and shiny and everything just looked like it was sparkling you know and just kind of like right out of a dream you know and uh the whole summer was like that you know and then i remember when my nephews were growing up and i'd come back from college to visit um they would be outside playing in the mud it'd be you know <laughs> yeah. running around their trucks and it'd be uh you know they try to play they get chased in when it started raining and yeah they it seemed like it was it was probably pretty pretty epic uh summertime weather there for at least that probably eight years ten years and i think we're i don't know i don't think we're that bad right now but it was uh pretty cool over the first half of this uh or the last half of the spring, I should say. It wasn't as warm. Yeah, and they say that uh, the weather for rice is hot days and cool nights. There was no flooding, but it's still flooding out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know if there's rice on the top of the water yet. Yeah. I don't know who, who ta who's taking watching over it or, you know. I don't know if there's... Uh, if there's uh, uh, weeds, ever see green leaves out there? There mm. must be past weeding. <coughs> we try to go and look for green, them weeds that are with the squidge, but mm -hmm. there was none. Mm. They were all under crowding under the water. Is that the ones that always used to be out in front of um, uh, Strong Gandhi? Yeah, them big, them where big, you, green big ones? tall weeds, yeah, where you would try to paddle and you'd get Mm -hmm. Getting a face or going through them, them yeah. are them kind of deal. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's none. <laughs> and there's there was there's a time when you can eat them, go and pick them and eat them. Mm. You know, and that's in probably now it would be July, oh. June, July, late. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to eat them in July. Yeah, in June, there's, July? but there's I don't think there's any out there. I don't see I, I don't see any. Only McGee walks see away. I know in my old office, you remember you brought one in that time. Mm -hmm. I still had that. I still had it hanging up there. I think you pinned it up on the wall, and then <laughs> <laughs> that's where I left it for a long time. <laughs> now you can go and yeah, um, go and gnaw on it. Go meet you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say weed. When you said you would care, uh, Clara, we're listening. Did you say Gawain a bizin da way see? Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't listen. Yeah, just had to keep that in my head. Like kids, we tell you not to do something and you do it anyway. Go in a wee bit and down, see. They should, uh, they should be, what would I say, when they tell you, be, be, uh, be the budget moment. They tell us something. You know, go in a bit and down, see. You don't listen. What about, uh, you said, uh, Tanny Hyde, Claire's, Claire's mom used to? Mm-hmm. She, she would be Tanny Hyde. Wawaske she we on is a deer hide. No, is that, is that something that they would have, well, I suppose they would have had to gone out and harvest the deer. Yeah, around June. Yeah, that's so they would go down the rivers, right? Yeah, they would go down and paddle down the rivers and they'd get, uh, go shoot a deer and then they'd, uh, that's when the meat was nice and tender, and, you know, mm -hmm. and then they, plus they would, uh, they would uh, keep that hide, you know, fresh and, and, uh, and then I suppose you could just stretch it out right away. And yeah, you could uh, soak it in the tub and get, you know, mm -hmm. get all the hair off there. And I remember and Grandpa I, talking about that. He said they'd only send him out there with three bullets. Holy man, I said, now these young guys nowadays will take old cart, take old box full of, <laughs> full of shells. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think anybody goes down the river now to hunt uh -uh. in the I summer. Heard, yeah. I still have a picture of uh, me and my dad. I remember that was one of, the, one of the more memorable times that we went out and hunted was out on um, um, Wood Straight Duck. Wood Duck, yeah. 
you know, like you said, you just go down the river and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a deer. And then you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember I was expecting that rifle to kick kind of hard and I, I overestimated how hard it was going to kick. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost splashed in the water because I was trying to anticipate that, that kick But while I was standing up. But uh, yeah, it, 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 was, it was an adventure and uh, especially getting that deer into the canoe and yeah, that was a that was a fun one. Man. Uh, Ruby, Auntie Ruby and Angela and Morrison used to go hunting in a, down the river. Mm. They they looked like two little men because oh, yeah. they were both short and chubby, and oh, they, wow. they both wore straw hats, and yeah. they'd come back with a deer. What? Wow! Two little ladies. <laughs> uh huh. They would go all the time. They they were good best friends and. They had to have been in really good shape to, to carry yeah. that, go hunting and then carry that deer by themselves. I went out one night with Lester. We went went down a wood duck trying to get a deer. He shot one, but we couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. We went back the next day to look in the daylight. And mm -hmm. we, not too far from where we looked, it was all bloated and because oh. the summers were so hot. Oh. And we just you know, had to leave it there. Well, how about the kids? Are they ready? Did you are they aware that we're going to do stories? Uh, I told them. I said uh, I didn't tell them today, but I don't mm. know if they're ready. You want to run over there, Terry? Yeah, yeah. 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 Say yeah. that. to do a story. Say uh, about uh, five minutes. Here. Yeah, about five minutes. Just tell them we're going to do uh, eleven forty-five. We're going to do a story and a little teaching. Okay. Tell Wendy. Wendy. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh I used to like the summers when they would fail to go hunting any place and you know and Was that like a almost like an everyday thing that they would have uh, mm -hmm. meat coming in and Yeah, and then but in the winter too, uh, J S and all his friends would go on a big camping thing and they'd take snowshoes and they'd they'd walk across the lake. And then they would uh, they would go hunting. Mm -hmm. They'd be gone for two nights or something, and they'd mm -hmm. come back with with uh, pack sacks full of uh, meat mm -hmm. all cut up. And oh, wow. they must have did that while they were uh, while they were uh, when as soon as they got the Wawashkeshi, they would cut it up. That was. Uh I was just going to say, you mentioned J.S. when you guys were talking earlier about headdresses. Remember that one that he used to have? Mm -hmm. I remember he had a, a headdress, I know. Um, I don't know what ever happened to it, though. I don't know either. Mm -hmm. I know Elver took, had a lot of the stuff that, of our grandpa's. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, he was the oldest, and but his house burnt down. Oh. And uh, I think everything uh, burnt in his house. Oh, okay. Could be, yeah. He had I pictures. Ask about that, see what yeah. He had a lot of pictures uh -huh. of old, you know. I think they then Phyllis too had uh -huh. took a lot of pictures. Oh yeah. Phyllis and Muggs. Mm-hmm. They're in the I tree see. They're listening. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's good that they're they're set up and listening. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So in about uh, two and a half minutes here, uh we'll get into some story time. In the meantime, let me see, we're just talking about uh, summertime activities and uh, what Auntie Karen can recall. Um, how far did you guys go for like berry picking and stuff like that? We paddled down Lost, Net, no, Lost River or Wood Duck. Mm. You know, we never went down Net River. Mm. I don't know why, mm. but mostly Lost River, that's where we all went to camp. Mm -hmm. There'd be everybody down there, like Good Skies and Drifts, mm -hmm. Jimmy and Ida, with their their kids and Ray Drift and Jesse and my ma and Ruby and Louie and all you know all of us. Mm -hmm. Cause it'd be just like a little Indian camp over there. Everybody had uh, wigwams or you know just something to sleep under or something. Mm -hmm. There'd be a lot of fires there going, cooking, you know, and we always, we always pull, uh,
camp by a river, right by close to the river, I suppose, where we can get water. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever swam, though, because I don't know why none of us boys swam. Mm. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was too deep, I don't know. Mm. Cold. We, <laughs> we go and get water to wash up, you know, and we mm -hmm. haul them by pails. And Mm. And we never, we, we couldn't be Timshki, that's lazy. Yeah. We had to all pick mm -hmm. and then we would eat and then eat by open fire and food was good. They'd, sometimes they'd, uh, they'd kill a rabbit or something and we would, uh, we would eat and they have a Persia Ganabu, mm -hmm. rabbit soup or, mm. you know, and it was, just like in old, old Indian camps where how they must have used to live long time ago. Yeah. You know? yep. We didn't have nothing to play with out there, no toys. The boys would make slingshots, but Louis used to bring some stuff for them to do, mm -hmm. like rubber and mm -hmm. all that. But that was... Well, I think we're at story time here. I uh, hope all the kids are gathered around there over by the Boys and Girls Club and uh, Auntie Karen's going to share you a story and uh, some teachings along with it and uh, go ahead there. Okay, Buju, Buju, Binujiag, Nukamis, Indigenikas, Sabikune, Zagi, Yadan, Nindun, Jiba, Adik, Nidu, Dam, Minogijeb, good morning, Nico Minogijeb, um, Gidab is in Dawiyuk, you should listen. So, Namadabin, Bizan, Bizindan, Namadabin, sit, Bizan, be quiet, Bizindan, listen. Well, there's a uh, it's July already. It's uh, Abta, Abta Gish, Abta Gish, half the, half, halfway moon, halfway. That's what it means. It's half, half the year or half. And what I have today was, first I have a little teaching and then a story after the teaching. But today, we're going to teach some about numbers, little bit numbers and some animals. And just three words, of, three words so you can remember. Uh, we're going to do Bejik, Nij, Niswe, Niwen, Nanan. Some of you might be able to count to ten. I don't know. Bejik, Nij. Niswe, Niwen, Nanan, Ningudaswe, Nijwaswe, Nishwaswe, Jangaswe, Midaswe, that's ten, Midaswe. But that's what, then we're going to do some little bit animals, like the animals that are out now is Makwa. You know what a Makwa is? Makwa, Shishib is ducks, Shishib, and Migizi. Uh, eagle, Nikisi, and uh, Aceban, a raccoon, and uh, what's another one I can think of, of an animal? Um, Gigu, well that ain't an animal, but that's a fish, Gigu. So that's five, five Dog. animals. Gog. Animus, yeah, a gog. Porcupine, everybody has animus. I don't know if you know your clans and how many have Indian names there. I, I, if you have an Indian name, raise your hand. And you know how to say cat. Gajigas, Gajigas, animus. And when you meet somebody in the morning, when you come to Boys and Girls Club, you say, uh, 
Bonjour, Niji, Mino Gijab. Hello, my friend. Good morning. Ani Niji Ayayan Nungum. How are you today? Ani Niji Ayayan Nungum. How are you today? And there's just uh, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, that you can learn when your little your young minds that can take up a lot of learning and you will remember them when you maybe like say when you're about 12 or 13 maybe one word will stick in your tiguan tiguan is your head one word maybe that'll keep that'll be with you forever and i was trying to think of some stories i i thought of uh i thought of one this morning and it's they're always about kids. The, they're always about kids, the stories and animals and teachings. Like I have a, I'm, I have a, a story about a dream. This is so, Gida Bizinda Wieg, you should listen. Daga means please, Daga Bizinda. Please listen. This is a, a, a story dream that I had about a uh, long time ago. And this, uh, this is, I, I had this in my, I went to sleep. I went to sleep. And before I went to sleep, I put Sam on by my bed, I have a little table by my bedside. So I put some Sama there, by, and I usually do that before I go to sleep. And here I must have started dreaming. I, this ain't real, this is just a dream. But that's how we, that's how we communicate with our people that are gone, that left the earth and they, they, they passed away. We communicate with them through dreams. So anyway, I went to sleep and I had a dream. I was down by the lake and the lake was just calm. The water was just like glass and there was no wind, no wind at all and the trees were just still. And I was the only one standing there. There was nobody with me at all, I was alone. And I was just standing there looking, I was looking out across the lake, past the Plaza Naui Guam, the island. And I could see way, o way over there, I could see like, a little dot something in the water something and here here as it got closer I, I, I kept looking what is that I kept saying what is that that means and pretty soon that per that person was in a, a gmon a boat a gmon and it was a little kind of like a mini, a mini boat, small in size. And wh whoever that was that was, had a little bitty paddle. It looked like a little kid paddle, but it wasn't. It was a real, it was, I could smell the cedar from that, from that paddle, like somebody just got done carving that paddle. A bui, that's how you say paddle, a bui. And then I could smell the wigwas on that gemon. That uh, wigwas is birch bark. Gemon is a boat. I could smell that when he got closer. That person wouldn't look at me, but he turned the boat around and I, he, I knew who that was. Then I knew who that was right away because he wouldn't look at me, but that was my husband who passed away he re, uh, recently passed away and went to the spirit world. And 
and he I know what he wanted me to do he wanted me to get in that boat with him Jimon Kitabu's in a way Jimon I was thinking I should get in that boat and then I tried I tried to get in and climb into that boat but it was too small so I fell out I fell out into the water then I got back up and I tried for the second time I I fell out again finally the third time I tried again same thing I fell out into the water again pretty soon pretty soon he took took his paddle and he started leaving he started going without me I wanted to get in and go with him but uh, I called a, a guy a medicine man the next day and I told him he said he wanted you to go with him he was wanted to take you where he is to the spirit world but but if you would have got in on that fourth try he said he would have took you with him and you would have died he said you would have he said, but you didn't. He said, he said you 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 have to stay here for some reason. He said they want you around here for I don't know what reason it is. He said, but you got to think of it. He said, and I told you before. He said when we were having a a funeral. He said, I told you before that your husband was going to try to come after you and take you with him because he didn't want to leave you behind. So so I said, oh, okay. And I was looking at, I was thinking of that. I woke up, I woke up and I was sitting by my bed and I was thinking about the dream I, I just had. I bowajige, that means dream, bowajige. Anyway, I was thinking, you know, that's the same thing they do when they have uh, Medewi um, burials. Because they, they have different burials, different kinds all the time. They have regular and then, but this one they had and, and I was thinking of that and they said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, uh, when, when you wake, because uh, I, help my daughters make he had he had to have a traveling bag to take with him when he went and in that bag we put it was little white like almost like look like a purse or a backpack it was white wapskisi white wapskisi and uh, we put in there we put in that little bag we put a one tea bag we put a little thimble in there, a little sewing thimble that, that had two like little handles on there. And that was where he could uh, cook, cook something. It had to be small, it couldn't be big. Everything is small that goes in there. Then I put like two kernels of wild rice. I put like two blueberries. I put a comb in there, a small comb a small pocket knife and then uh, in some tobacco, Sama tobacco, I, I put it into a little bag like a little tie and then that when I tied when uh, he was ready to go on his journey we put it around their neck so they can and then they all you also have to I also put a little bitty uh, tiny blanket in there like a small throw but that's what uh, we do when we have our uh, our Indian funerals, because they have many kinds of funerals. That's the only one I attend to is one. Well, I attend to others too, but when uh, I I go to Indian funerals a lot, because they, you know, I can understand what they're talking about when they're when they're talking Indian, and you know, and then. There's a lot of other things that they do. The first night someone passes away, you're supposed to put charcoal on your forehead and you know, a black mark right there. You're supposed to make it 
like in a wavy thing like a, a guinea-big. What do you, if you know what a guinea-big is, that's a snake, guinea-big. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna try to teach the young kids Tuesdays and Thursdays every week. So, so you'll be ready to, when you go back to school, to be with be, uh, Bejan, you'll, you'll know a lot of your language and your animals and your numbers and maybe, I know a lot of you know how to introduce yourself, so Gigawabamen, I'll see you, Bama, Nijo Gijigat, Tuesday, Gigawabamen, Miigwech. That is going to do it for us today on uh, Anishinaabe Moen with Auntie Karen. Uh, on behalf of Perry and Grandma Karen, we uh, appreciate you tuning in and we'll get you back to our normal programming. We got uh, Native America calling and National Native News coming right up. You all make it a gooder day. Aho. Going, going machine, not yet. Going machine, and we bought the new people to go. I forget how you do it, even the word for yawn. Okay. I can't remember that word for yawn. For what? Yawn. yawn? When, yeah, there's a word for it, but I can't remember. Let's see if I can find it. Maybe it's only the old people.